The balance between our energy intake and expenditure is what determines long-term body weight change. While the energy intake side of the equation is fairly straightforward, the expenditure side is far more complex. So how exactly do we burn calories each day? What components contribute to this? And how can we accurately quantify energy expenditure? Before exploring the components of energy expenditure, it is first important to understand why this is even something we are concerned with. Well, from a body composition perspective, this is relevant to achieve a desired energy balance state. The difference between energy intake and energy expenditure ultimately determines our long-term body weight change. Consuming more calories than we expend results in weight gain over time. Consuming less calories than we expend results in weight loss over time. And consuming equal calories to expenditure results in weight maintenance over time. Diet is usually the first point of call to influence energy balance as a way to alter the energy intake side of the equation. But should we be focusing more on energy expenditure? To understand this, let's look at the components of energy expenditure. There are three primary ways in which we burn energy. Our basal metabolic rate, the thermic effect of feeding, and physical activity. Physical activity can also be subcategorized into non-exercise activity thermogenesis, or NEAT for short, and intentional exercise. Basal metabolic rate typically contributes the largest amount to energy expenditure, around 60 to 75% in most cases. The thermic effect of feeding typically contributes the smallest, usually around 10%. And physical activity generally contributes around 15 to 30%, depending on activity levels. So essentially, when we add together the energy burned from each component, we get our total daily energy expenditure. Let's now look at each component in a little more detail. First is basal metabolic rate. This is the energy required for essential physiological functions, such as breathing, blood circulation, immune function, and so on. Essentially, this can be thought of as the amount of energy we would expend if we were to rest in bed for 24 hours straight without moving at all. As mentioned, this is the largest contributor to energy expenditure, typically being around 60 to 75% of total daily expenditure. Our basal metabolic rate is mostly based on total body mass. Heavier individuals burn more energy at rest than lighter individuals. This study plotted the relationship between basal metabolic rate and body mass. As expected, the relationship clearly showed that heavier individuals have a higher metabolic rate than lighter individuals in both males and females. Furthermore, body composition also seems to influence metabolic rate to some extent. Lean tissue like muscle, bone and organs are more energetically expensive than body fat per gram. This study shows the proportion that each tissue contributes to resting energy expenditure. As we can see, lean tissue like muscle mass and other organs are far more energetically costly than adipose tissue and skin. What this means is that two individuals at the same body weight could have slightly different energy expenditures based on body composition. Someone with more lean mass and less fat mass will usually have a slightly higher metabolic rate compared with someone else that has more fat mass and less lean mass. Second, we have the thermic effect of feeding. This refers to an increase in our metabolic rate occurring from the intake, digestion, transportation, and storage of food that we eat. These processes require energy to complete, so our metabolic rate increases a little as a result. The thermic effect of feeding is typically considered to contribute around 10% to total daily energy expenditure for most typical diets. However, certain factors can influence energy expended from the thermic effect of feeding to a small degree. First is the total amount of calories consumed. Consuming more total calories requires more energy to digest and transport the food, boosting the energy burn slightly. And second is the macronutrient composition of our diet. Higher protein and carbohydrate diets typically result in a slightly higher thermic effect compared with higher fat diets. And higher fiber intakes also seem to require more energy to process. However, the absolute amount of energy burned via the thermic effect of feeding is unlikely to be meaningfully altered by intentional diet strategies. For example, this study suggests that doubling protein intake from 15 to 30% of total calories during a 2000 calorie diet would increase the thermic effect of feeding by only 23 calories per day. 
So for the most part, the thermic effect of feeding is not something we can intentionally manipulate to any meaningful degree using different diet strategies. It is a small contributor to total energy expenditure and is mostly based on how much food we eat. And how much we eat is determined by how much energy we expend and whether we are trying to gain or lose weight. And the third component of energy expenditure is physical activity. There are various definitions for this term, but for this video, physical activity will refer to all forms of movement. This includes subconscious movements like fidgeting, consequential activity such as walking around the supermarket, and intentional exercise like playing sport. As mentioned, this typically contributes around 15-30% to 30 to total daily energy expenditure in most cases. Although physical activity is subject to the largest variability between individuals. Highly active individuals will obviously burn more energy from physical activity, while sedentary individuals will burn less. So far it seems pretty simple. We just calculate the individual components of energy expenditure, add them together, and we have our total daily energy expenditure number, right? Well, technically yes, but it is not that simple in reality. This is because once we start changing our diet and exercise habits, it influences other components of energy expenditure. There are three primary exercise and diet related factors which will influence the components of energy expenditure. The first is physical activity levels. Quite obviously, doing more exercise increases how much energy we burn through movement. However, this doesn't seem to have a direct additive effect on energy expenditure. In other words, doing more exercise doesn't seem to impact total daily energy expenditure on a one-to-one -one basis. Instead, we actually tend to see a decrease in the other components of energy expenditure when exercise levels increase. So the net total effect on energy expenditure is typically less than we would expect. This has been termed constrained energy expenditure in the literature, such as this paper, which suggested that as more exercise is performed, the other components of energy expenditure decrease to compensate. This still results in greater total daily expenditure, but not to the same extent that we might predict. But how much compensation do we experience from exercise? Well, this is a good question, and something we don't have a conclusive answer to yet. And it is likely moderated by other factors, like the amount of exercise performed, familiarity to the exercise modality, our body fat levels, and our current energy balance state. However, this paper estimated that, on average, we tend to observe about a 28% compensation from exercise. In other words, total daily energy expenditure will only increase by about 72% of the energy burned via exercise. But where does this compensation come from? What components are decreasing as a result of exercising more? Again, this is not something we fully understand at this stage. Some hypotheses to explain this compensation include a reduction in basal metabolic rate, reduced NEAT levels, a decrease in subconscious movements like fidgeting, and improved exercise efficiency during exercise. None of these individual factors seem to explain this energy compensation alone, so it may be a combination of multiple variables. Another factor influencing the components of energy expenditure is weight gain and weight loss. As we have discussed, our body weight is probably the single biggest determinant of our basal metabolic rate. Heavier individuals reliably have a higher metabolic rate on average than lighter individuals. Of course, our body composition also plays somewhat of a role here too. Those carrying more lean mass as a proportion of their body weight will typically have a higher metabolic rate than someone with more body fat. But all tissues, including body fat, seem to be somewhat metabolically active and expend some amount of energy at rest. So when we lose weight, this usually decreases our metabolic rate. This is because we simply have less total tissue we are carrying, which requires less energy to sustain at rest. For example, this study found that resting energy expenditure decreased by around 380 calories per day in obese subjects who lost 20% of their initial body weight. Similarly, metabolic rate tends to increase with weight gain. Again, this occurs because we have more total tissue mass, which requires more energy to sustain at rest. For example, this study found that resting energy expenditure increased by around 140 calories per day in both non-obese and obese subjects, gaining 10% of their initial body weight. Furthermore, the amount of energy expended via physical activity seems to change with weight gain and weight loss. It requires more energy to move a heavier body than a lighter body. 
So the amount of energy we expend per unit of physical activity would in theory increase with weight gain and reduce with weight loss. This was observed in this study, which found that weight loss over 12 months resulted in a decrease in energy burned via physical activity, with more weight loss resulting in greater reductions. However, average activity levels remained essentially unchanged over this time frame, indicating that the reduction in energy expenditure may have been from each unit of activity burning slightly less calories. Another factor influencing energy expenditure is our current energy balance state. In other words, whether we are currently eating in a surplus, deficit or at maintenance on average over time. For one, the thermic effect of feeding will likely increase slightly during a surplus and decrease slightly during a deficit. This is because the thermic effect of feeding is proportionate to the amount of food consumed. Intaking more food requires more energy to digest, transport and store, while these processes aren't required to the same magnitude when less food is consumed. For example, this study found that when subjects consumed twice their maintenance calorie requirements for a day, energy expended via the thermic effect of feeding also doubled compared with eating at maintenance calories. Furthermore, basal metabolic rate also seems to change with different energy balance states. Eating in a surplus tends to increase our metabolic rate, while a deficit tends to reduce it. This was seen in this study, which compared energy expenditure in individuals during both a calorie surplus and deficit. It was found that after 7 days of overfeeding, resting energy expenditure increased by around 50 calories per day. After a subsequent 21 days of calorie restriction, resting expenditure reduced by around 170 calories less than baseline. Then after a subsequent 14 days of overfeeding, it increased a little above baseline once again. So taking all this into consideration, how can we really know how many calories we burn per day? Well, it will be almost impossible to know the exact value without access to research-grade technology. And even if we knew our exact expenditure on one day, it could very well change from day to day slightly, and even more so based on physical activity levels, diet, weight gain or loss, and changes in body composition. So there is almost no way to know exactly from a practical perspective exactly what our energy expenditure is each day. But do we really need to know this exact value anyway? Well, not really. For the purposes of body composition changes, the whole purpose of trying to quantify energy expenditure is so that we can adjust our diet to achieve weight loss or weight gain. We are really just trying to achieve an energy balance state, it doesn't really matter what the specific numbers are. Thankfully, it is much more simple to assess our energy balance state. The way this is achieved is by observing our body weight. Long-term body weight trends are the most reliable indicator of our energy balance state. If body weight is increasing on average over time, we are consuming more calories than we are expending. If body weight is decreasing on average over time, we are consuming fewer calories than we are expending. And if body weight is maintaining on average over time, we are consuming equal calories to what we are expending. So, to inform us of how many calories to consume, we just need to observe our body weight trend and adjust our diet. If we are trying to lose weight, but weight is maintaining over time, we need to consume fewer calories. Or if we are losing weight, but not as fast as we would like, then we need to further reduce calories to reduce weight at a faster rate. Alternatively, if we want to gain weight, then we need to consume more calories than what we are currently consuming. This also doesn't mean we need to track our calorie intake every day. You could certainly track your calories and get a quantifiable number to work from, but there are other ways too. You might just make small changes to your habitual diet to either increase or decrease calories. For example, maybe you add or reduce an extra snack throughout the day, or try to consume higher or lower calorie dense meal options. In summary, let's recap how we expend energy. We burn energy via three primary components, our basal metabolic rate, the thermic effect of feeding, and physical activity. Basal metabolic rate refers to the amount of energy we expend via baseline physiological functions that keep us alive. The thermic effect of feeding is the temporary increase in metabolic rate required to intake, digest and transport the food we consume. And physical activity refers to all forms of movement including subconscious, consequential and intentional exercise. When we add together the energy burned from each component, we have our total daily energy expenditure. 
However, there are several moderating factors which influence each component. Doing more exercise doesn't have a direct additive effect on energy expenditure. There is some degree of downregulation from other components that occurs. When we gain or lose body weight, our basal metabolic rate increases or decreases accordingly, and the amount of energy we burn via exercise also changes. And whether we are currently eating in a deficit, maintenance, or surplus influences how much energy we expend via the thermic effect of feeding and our metabolic rate. Because of the complex nature of energy expenditure, it is almost impossible to get a highly accurate measurement of total daily energy expenditure in a practical setting. But this isn't really an issue because we don't need to quantify energy expenditure that accurately. For the purposes of body composition changes, we just need to track our body weight over time and adjust our diet to achieve the energy balance state we are after. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.